I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos, where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good morning, good morning, Stephen Hess. How are you doing on this wonderful, beautiful morning? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, great pleasure to connect with you. What part of the world are you in right now, Stephen? Um, I'm from Newcastle, England, um, which is the north uh, northeast of England for people who don't know. Um, and yeah, so I, I well, I, I technically I'm in the sort of um, town just outside of Newcastle, but um, that's where I'm from. Uh, hence, if anyone might hear the Geordie accent in me, even though I guess it's sort of quite mild. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so that's where I'm from. Love it. Well, do tell us which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this time. Cool. Yeah. Um, well, as you said, my name's Stephen Hesse. I run a podcast and website, which is currently down for maintenance, but uh, it's called Geek Apocalypse, um, which I've been doing since 2013. Um, which is basically my idea. It came out of sort of a radio. Basically, I did a bunch of like sort of radio. I ran a community radio station um, not far from here, um, which is how I learned how to do things and kind of just wanted to do things a little bit more kind of like, I guess, what this interview is, is very like a conversation, um, which I felt I wasn't doing as much uh, in my old show. So I wanted to create an own my own podcast that kind of, was with an idea of just having a an opportunity to have any guest possible because I kind of have this remit of geeky just kind of means being passionate hmm. and being interested in things, um, which we kind of all are. Yeah. Um, so my point is I have a guest every week um, and sometimes we do hosted ones with some friends of mine, but for the most part, it's a different guest each week um, and we talk about anything and everything. Um, because I think that's what the best conversations are. Um, so yeah, like I say, I've been doing this since 2013, and we've done 152 episodes wow. as of this recording. Congratulations! So, so yeah. When so was the that, last that, time you were on the other side of the mic? Oh, good question. Uh, I would say I do occasional guest podcasts right. um, because um, I'm part of a podcast network here in the UK. Right. Um, so I occasionally do guests on other people's shows. I'm trying to remember the last one I did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's been quite a while actually. Because <laughs> when, when you asked when you asked me, I kind of was going, "Well, yeah, it's it's kind of weird to be on the other side of the fence because I'm usually the one trying to figure out what I should ask." <laughs> um, so it's kind of yeah. quite nice. Yeah, um, it is right. It's like um, you know, it's like inviting someone for Christmas dinner. You have to prepare the meals, right? But yes. when yeah, you exactly. are the one that's invited, yeah, there's an yeah. ease, right, that comes with it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. well, yeah, I, absolutely. Listen to the podcast. So the last podcast was on Star Trek, right? Uh, your podcasts are Correct. like for two hours and change, like no doubt to the power of the conversation. There, yeah, for sure, for sure, for Thank sure. You. Yeah, that's right. Kind. Yeah, yeah. Well done, well done. So, who did you learn yeah. the skill of conversation from? Uh, well, yeah. So, um, uh, it that actually that actually is a good segue because the example you just gave, I did slightly a little bit differently, which I mentioned at the beginning was because I usually have a very sort of improvised way of, of talking. Um, that's something that you kind of have to develop over time. Um, I've, just reached I've just reached 30 years of age. So I've been doing this quite a while. Um, because when I, the, the, the first sort of example I can give you of when I did something sort of radio, media-ish type of thing was um, when I was at college. Um, and I did a, a, a course called Sport Leadership, which is uh, in the UK. People would know what that means. It's kind of you learn how to do business and you learn how to sort of um, organize events uh, sort of financially and, 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 and all that kind of thing. And, and like you come up with a budget. And so whenever we did events, we needed a co commentator um, because there were parents that would come to these events and various other things. So we would do stuff for like people in the community um so they wanted people someone to be over the mic and i remember sitting there going i really really want to do that that sounds like a job i really want to do and i was quite humbled because the people who were in the course um nominated me to do it oh. um so i didn't i didn't even have to ask um hmm. so i thought that was a really good sign of like and i guess it sort of led to this career in the 
um, you know, I pretty much talk for a living. So I think that that point, because I always thought in the back of my mind, I'd kind of want to do this. Um, but then I didn't really know how to do it and I hadn't really sort of um, tried to to do it. Mm. Um, and I just think that one opportunity where someone gave me the confidence to try and it went really well. And I got lots of like really nice feedback because um, we did like a swimming competition uh, for a bunch of like schools in the area. And I had to basically commentate on what was happening as well as like let people know what event was happening at what time. And like so I was over like a PA system. And I just remember, like, I I remember it very fondly because I ha- I still have that buzz of feeling like I did a good job, um, and I just felt like I know I I was like I really want to do that again. That was really fun, and how I learned to kind of just hone that skill was I got a job doing a media thing for the YMCA, which is a well known charity, and like a worldwide charity, and. Um, I, I asked to do a media thing and when I got that job they said that there was a radio station in the building that was kind of fa- fallen off because the woman who ran it w- had left to go like to travel the world which I thought was kind of interesting <laughs> they, so they gave me the opportunity to do it uh, in, a, in a nutshell and um, they went would you like to do it because they looked at my like sort of CV and seen that I had done some of that stuff before um, so it became part of my job there. Um, so I ran that like sort of before I did Geek Apocalypse, I'd run that for about three ish years. Um, so I kind of went from just being able to talk to kind of learning like how to, you know, set up a mic and how to do sound editing and how to, wow. you know, and I learned it all by On myself. The run, yeah. 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 Um, like I literally learned it. Deep. As, yeah. Cause I, cause to be, to be honest, right. I guess just to summarize, it was a great, it was a freak opportunity because it just, it it was a side thing. I actually got hired to do, originally it was to do social media, um, but then it became part of my job. And then it got, I developed it into when we had like, we actually had a good amount of shows and, and um, you know, it wasn't, it was just a community radio station. So it wasn't like massive, but it, it taught me all the basic skills mm. that I still use today. Um, and that was, that was something like eight, nine years ago. So Fast so, yeah, forward, that, here you are. Yep, and here I am. So, oh, yeah. That's amazing. Wow. Do you still see things falling your way the exact same way that happened? <laughs> well, um, I can't be a firm believer in that it's a little bit of both and that you kind of have to, you, you need to continue to work at it. Um, and I think one of the things that I find very uh, motivating in terms of doing interviews and I'm sure you, you've, I'm sure in you doing these conversations that you probably feel the same way. It's that every conversation is different. Um, and the reason that that kind of leads you to have to have a certain different style for each guest, because you basically, I believe a really, really good show. I also do a radio show as well, um, which is on an, um, a radio station here in Newcastle. And, and it's very different because of there's ads and it's not like a podcast where you can kind of take your time. So it's different aspects of speaking. Um, and I and I really like that challenge because it's different every time, um, especially when you have different guests. And, you know, you, you might have someone who's nervous. You might have somebody who's who's quite comfortable and you might have somebody who's, I don't know, like um, a little bit um, reserved or something. And it, it's kind of a host responsibility to um, to get it out of them and, and make a good show and, and, and talk about what they want to talk about, really. Um, so that I, I, I think it's a little bit of both and that you, you want to have like sort of luck in terms of it going your way, but also like I'm, I'm just sort of describing it, it requires a lot of hard work, like any, like any good hobby or job or, or something that you're passionate about. Um, yeah. it, it, it requires just as much hard work as it does actually doing it. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> Love it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm soaking it in all in. Well, again, amazing audience, you're hearing it live here from Stephen Hess. Here. Uh, Stephen, where's the best place for people to connect with you? Um, well, I'm on the I'm on Twitter. Um, you can find me at at geek underscore apocalypse. Um, I also have an email, which is Stephen Hesswood Media at gmail dot com. Uh, once my website's up, because um, there was been a, a sort of situation with that for a while, okay. um, but uh, that has that has whole contact information. Um, which which quite a few people email me about. Um, so, but obviously, to, I guess sort of Twitter right now would probably be the best one. I mean, also you can find me on LinkedIn, which is how you contacted me. So you know, there's there's a fair few 
podcasters and podcast listeners who who message me through that so Wonderful. um so whatever people like we just type in Stephen Hesse I assume in LinkedIn you will find me you know it's intriguing how uh you connected the dots right I love that uh it's it's fascinating I'm glad you did yeah. that but it's just I, I would like to add as well it's yeah. super fascinating to me that now you're the guy that's providing geek material for others <laughs> yeah very true yeah I mean it's weird as well because I would just say I've made this point before on my show that my my dad is very like was the guy that sort of sh- showcased what people would say would be geeky shows you know like i could list a bunch of them like i've just said doctor who red dwarf there's like stargate star trek star wars um he was the one who showed me it and yet um he he kind of doesn't really <laughs> sort of think of himself as a geek even though like like anybody who would stereotypically look at that would go He's clearly the person who influenced you in being. <laughs> so, um, I find that quite funny that he's just like kind of like, no, I'm not that at all. And I'm like, you watched. He probably watched more. He's probably watched more programs of that nature in his entire life. I mean, he's like 72 now. Wow. wow. He's probably watched way more shows than I could could have possibly done. Hmm. Um, but yeah, because I just remember that was the type of shows we uh, that was always on in our house. Um, so yeah. So if we fast forward yeah. to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? Oh, 12. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Um, I'm going to I'm going to take a hit in terms of embarrassment here. Right. Because I had I had really poor taste <laughs> when I was that age. Um, the I mean, I, I was kind of the classic would listen to like chart music, like as in whatever was out at the time. And I'm part of the 90s generation. Like I say, I'm 30. So at 12, I would have been sort of late late 90s right and um, so thinking about it I, I can't believe i'm saying this i'm so embarrassed but i was really into nsync <laughs> <laughs> do you know who that is it's yeah just, definitely which w- yeah. yeah which one well i mean you're seeing justin timberlake to kind of get it um cooler than it is i'm guessing right but it was nsync i mean it, there was no justin timberlake then it was only nsync right uh, yeah. <laughs> what was the name of the yeah. song um, I remember, it, it, I, I might be wrong in terms of like accuracy, but the one that I remember, that because I, I can remember the lyrics, which is like even more embarrassing, is the bye bye bye. Okay. You know, like, yeah. which, yeah, which was just like. Um, Are you doing the moves while you're saying bye bye bye? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope not. I know, yeah. like, parts of my body did jingle a bit there going, oh, I do yeah. probably. I'm doing it too. I'm doing it on my side. You know, it's funny. Uh, it's really funny, I think, and fascinating uh, how psychologically individuals uh, on the other side of 30 or 25, uh, when they say the earliest childhood memory is um, NSYNC or Backstreet Boys, there's always a premise like, um, I mean, this is embarrassing or I'm not, I can't believe it. It's really <laughs> fascinating to me how that has happened thus far. Yeah. Uh, but Stephen, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready? Very nice. Yeah, Stephen, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Well, yeah, actually, um, as I touched on uh, just quickly was the other show that I do is a show called Mentally Sound, which is... Um, also are available on iTunes and it's a mental health show. Um, so part of the stuff that we do for that, because it's uh, we help people who are in difficult situations. So we actually run a training course for it. Um, so I actually teach my skills, um, whether it be interview technique or a little bit of how to podcast or whatever, or even just it could be just as simple as learning how to use a mic. Mm-hmm. And we basically teach them uh, teach them how to talk and how to communicate and um, and they end up becoming part of the team who runs that radio show. Um, so I literally do do that as part of my job, essentially. Um, so I, that was one of the things I was really sort of passionate about once I'd done all this work was that, you know, people who have the passion for doing it, I'm happy to teach. Um, I would say just as a small asterisk that it's very easy now to 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 start shows um, and to broadcast um, and I think some people like sort of just skip ahead to that point without actually you know you know pl- applying their trade and get an understanding how to talk um, so I think that kind of you know once you have a little bit of experience and I've done as I said I've done this for quite a while is that I, I would gladly want to pass it on uh, for people who want to do it so mm. I'm already doing that there so yeah are you married 
<laughs> Am I married? I'm not, no. Do you have children? I don't. Do you believe in God? I do not. Do you have an inner circle of friends? I do. do um, I think that's super important. And do um, you watch TV for more than three hours a day? Um, that's This is an interesting one because um, I, I don't um, have a TV in terms of I don't watch regular British TV. Right. Um, I find it very, I find it very, like, it's full of reality TV and stuff that I really am not interested in. But if you apply that to the internet, as in Netflix and, and well, YouTube. Yeah. Let so, me ask that one. What about screen time, yeah. the phone and yeah. the computer? Is it more than yeah. it or less than uh, it? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, if you, if you change it to that question, then yeah, I'd probably easily hit three hours because with the job that I do, um, I'm on the computer a lot of the time. So whenever I take a break, I usually, you know, put on a YouTube video or or I watch like a, you know, a series of, of something on Netflix. And so, yeah, probably in, in, a, in the course of one uh, one day, I easily hit three hours. Oh, um, uh, but I'm, I'm purely like kind of an Internet uh you know junkie i guess as in that yeah i'm purely like watch things on the internet Steve. um yeah steven if we had to share if you had to share with us your own unique real statement a statement that represents steven hesse what would you say that is um could you say that again i didn't sure. quite hear it if yeah. you had to share with us your own unique real statement a statement that represents steven hesse what would you say that is hmm I'm not quite sure what the question means. <laughs> okay. Well, it's like a mission uh, statement. What's the mission statement for Stephen uh, Hersey? Statement. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say, um, you know, obviously, because as I say, I started a, a sort of company is essentially called Geek Apocalypse. And, and I would say it's, it's actual goal. It's cause, cause it's like, that's my personality is that I kind of would like, uh, the mission statement to be, that we can all sort of communicate and have conversations like this one, um, where we are not sort of judged for what we like. Um, we're sort of, uh, you, we embrace what we like and we have the ability to, you know, talk to each other and communicate and, and not be sort of discriminated against. Um, I guess, cause I am a passionate, you know, talker about mental health as well. I mean, that's an example of where it's something we all have an issue with at some point, or we know somebody that goes through it. Um, and it would be a much better situation that if we're open enough that we can kind of talk about whatever and have a sort of open society where we're not sort of judged, you know, I guess like I think of the Martin Luther King quote, by not the color of our skin, but the content of our character, hmm. um, you know, where we get the same opportunities and, the, and we get the, op, you know, and we get the, have the chance to get to know anybody and everybody. Um, because that doesn't happen uh, right now. Like, you know, there's people who want to, I guess, you know, that's the, the, the pros and cons of like the internet, for example, is that the internet does some really good things, but because of like the sort of anonymity of people where, you know, they can be pretty much anonymous, even if they do have, you know, profiles and accounts is that it can be negative as well. You know, you can get bullied and various other things. And it would just be nice if we were in a situation where, we can embrace what we like, and if you don't like it, you just say it's not for me instead of criticizing people who do. Um, that would be a, a great situation. So that's just my sort of mission statement in any show that I do, is that it's a it's a it's a it's a non judgmental zone where we can talk about anything we want, and you know we're not going to be judged for it. I think like, no. that would be kind of nice. <laughs> there <laughs> to we go. Yeah, most definitely. Well, Stephen, this has been a great pleasure, my friend. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Um, not, uh, not that I think of just thank you so much for having me um, obviously if people listen to this which most likely will be have not listened to my podcast then please please do um, you can find it on iTunes um, and some other podcasting sites um, just type in Geek Apocalypse you should be able to find it um, and yeah it's just um, continue to enjoy things that you do and uh and uh, support podcasting as well, particularly in the UK. I guess I should say that as being part of the podcast network. It's that um, the UK podcasting scene needs all the support because, you know, we're up against an established thing in BBC Radio, um, really. So, you know, podcasting's great and I listen to a bunch of things and um, hopefully it becomes like, a, you know, as big of an industry as it is in America, for example. So keep listening and uh, give people the chance uh, and hopefully and 
hopefully become a fan i guess <laughs> <laughs> hey but well, Stephen, again great pleasure my friend thank you for being on what is inspired by 12 minute convos with angel jones brilliant thank you so much for having me You're welcome. thank you for being on 12 minute convos with angel jones stay tuned for more from our advertisers diabetes is a mountain pandemic it's a disease that's not acute but chronic Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com. Dot com.